I'm here at Rose Cafe in Venice to gather inspiration from their version of the classic Roman pasta dish, carbonara. I've known Jason, the chef at the Rose Cafe, for years, and he's honestly my favorite chef in LA. I love the food he creates. It's really seasonal, it's globally inspired, and the pasta is probably my favorite thing that he makes. Thank you. This is the carbonara that led me to ask him to do the food at our wedding. I have no idea why or how, but he said yes. So I had the best food at a wedding ever. It's a historical fact, and the carbonara was the star. We ran out of carbonara, I think, three times in one night, and he had to fire a million versions of this. What I love about Jason's version of carbonara is it's a little bit deconstructed, and he really made it his own. So instead of incorporating an egg into the sauce, he has a perfectly cooked egg on top. You can tell it's perfectly cooked because it jiggles. You know that the yolk and the whites are both evenly cooked, and it's just amazing. There's a ton of freshly cracked black pepper, there's pecorino, and instead of doing guanciale, which is pork jowl, he's instead using pancetta, which is pork belly. I'm gonna kind of be inspired by both the classic and by what Jason's doing when I bring this home to my own kitchen. I am gonna steal Jason's idea of putting the egg on top because honestly, I love that. There's nothing more dramatic than slicing into a perfectly cooked yolk and it's spilling everywhere. All right, here it goes. If you have carbonara in Rome, that's where I had my honeymoon with my husband, so we ate a lot of carbonara. They use guanciale, which is the pork jowl. To start, I'm gonna chop up the guanciale into little lardons, and then over low heat, render out the fat. The low heat is gonna let the fat release really slowly, so I end up with a lot of wonderful fat to cook in, and then really crisp little pieces of guanciale. So while the fat's rendering, I'm going to parallel process, and I'm gonna get my pasta into the water. I'm going to add some salt to the water. I want it to be salty like the sea. Bucatini is a very, very fat spaghetti, and it has a little hole in it all the way down. So if you go through, you can technically see through it, kind of. I love it because it has that hole down the center, so it soaks up all of that amazing sauce. In goes the pasta. And that's going to cook for about like 12 minutes or so. Basically, I'm just going to taste test it. I just want to make sure it's nice and al dente. I'm going to be cooking it in the pan as well, so I do not want overcooked mushy pasta. I really fell in love with Roman pasta on my honeymoon, and I think it's because it's basically the same three or four ingredients, but just shuffled different ways. So there's carbonara, which we're making, cacio e pepe, uh, grisia, and then amatriciana. All four of the pastas have pecorino, black pepper, and the guanciale in it. So in the carbonara, we add the egg to make it really creamy. On the tritiana, you add the tomato to make it really bright. So there's something about that combination of flavor, that savoriness from the guanciale, the pepper, the pecorino, just goes together so, so well. The guanciale is nice and crisp, so now I'm gonna take the guanciale out of the pan, leaving behind the rendered fat. The rendered fat's gonna act as the base of our sauce. I'm now gonna add about three tablespoons of mascarpone per person. Oh my gosh, it's so thick and creamy, look at that. There we go. And then I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of the pasta water in here. The pasta water has starch in it, so it's going to make it really creamy and really pull everything together. So I'm just gonna whisk it until it looks like a sauce and then keep it over the heat and let it reduce a little bit. And at this point, I'm gonna add about half the cheese. So I want about three ounces of pecorino per portion. So it's a lot of cheese. And I'm gonna do about half first. All right, let's check in on the pasta. It's definitely a little al dente. Ah. Maybe like one more minute, but it's almost there. Now I'm gonna take the pasta and don't worry about draining it too much. The pasta water is gonna help add to the sauce. So I'm gonna now put this in the pan and stir everything together. A little bit of black pepper. So while this is still hot, I'm gonna set this aside and get going on making the egg. I like doing a fried egg rather than a poached egg because honestly, poaching eggs kind of stresses me out. I have a pan that I've gotten very, very hot. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, crack the egg in it, and then in order to cook the top of the egg as quickly as the bottom, I'm going to baste it with that hot oil. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if you fry eggs, you know this, the bottom cooks way faster than the top, and it's really annoying. So you end up with kind of, it's a little undercooked on the top, which I don't really like. I want the white to be set, but with a perfectly jiggly egg yolk. So I'm gonna start plating everything together. I've got my pasta, and then I'm gonna do a little sprinkle of the guanciale. 
Now the egg is gonna go on top of the pasta. I'm going to finish with the rest of that pecorino, a little bit of pepper, and that's it. My carbonara is ready to devour. Time to destroy it now. Time to mess it all up and make it even more delicious. Oh yes, perfectly runny egg yolk. That is so good. I love this recipe so much. It's simple, it's delicious, it's so, so decadent, but it's totally worth it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. For more videos like this one, click here. To subscribe to Food Network's YouTube channel, click here. Comment below, like the video if you like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.